friends. In this video, I wanna share with you five simple tricks I use to hack my emotional eating and lose 50 pounds in three months. with emotional eating most of my life to the point where it caused so much weight gain that I ended up reaching my heaviest weight of 275 pounds in my late 20s and my weight was causing me serious health problems like plantar fasciitis and sleep apnea to the point where I needed a CPAP machine to help me breathe at night and I knew if I did not fix my emotional eating and lose weight that my life was at risk. This video is really important because these tricks, they literally saved my life. And nobody is sharing this on any other channel out there. These tricks not only helped me work through my emotional eating, but stick to what I was doing and combined with portion control, I wasn't able to just lose 50 pounds in three months. I went on to lose 130 pounds and keep it off for seven years. So here they are. The first one. Now, um, my husband, Kyle Sassy, behind the camera, he also struggled with emotional eating and lost 130 pounds and kept it off for seven years. And one of the biggest things that we learned, one of the biggest tricks was to portion our food in containers right away. All our meals, all our snacks, portion everything out and label it with our name, the day, and what it was. Because this is the trick. If, you know, here's it, here it is an example of what it looked like. So a snack for a Monday night. Nicole, Monday night snack time. Kyle, Monday night snack time. The idea behind it was if we labeled everything and I ate my Monday night snack that was labeled with my name, I wasn't gonna go and eat Kyle's snack for Monday night. I also wasn't gonna go eat my Tuesday snack because then I would have nothing. So this was sort of like really helped with our portion control stuff and it helped us only eat one thing and then be done. And this was one of the biggest things that we did for pretty much the first couple of years actually. And uh, so here's an example of one of the snacks as well. Some nuts and a turkey pepperoni. These are seasoned smokehouse almonds and then a turkey pepperoni. Also, we did the same with meals too. So any sort of meal we would put in a container, breakfast, lunch, dinner, two snacks. It was all labeled and portioned out. We bought single servings where we could, but if we couldn't, the portions and labeling really came in handy because once I was finished with one of my portions, it reminded me, oh yeah, this is it. When it's empty, it's done for the day. Like me and Nicole tried willpower. We tried positive thinking. We, it didn't, didn't work. work. We no. were, we had massive addictions to food we, and overeating f for emotional reasons. So we really like literally needed to kind of force ourselves and hack certain things to make us stick to a portion, for example, like this first one. And this was a hack that really helped because we used food to medicate, to self-medicate. Um, so this helped. It was a really good guide. When you have low self-esteem, you don't really care much about yourself. Like personally, when I was really overweight and struggling with emotional eating, I didn't care about myself, but I cared about Kyle. So when I would buy food, I would eat it all to myself. But when I saw that someone else had food, I didn't want to eat Kyle's food. And this is why this hack worked. And if you live alone, label it with someone you care about. Put mom, if you know you care about your mom, even if you don't live with them. Anything to help you go, no, wait a minute. It's not my food for the day. I'm done my food. And it really works because when you know you're gonna give someone else the food or someone else has food there, you're not gonna eat it. More than likely, you care enough about the other people that you won't touch it. And that was why that trick really worked for us. And even if we're not gonna see the person for weeks, we slap that label on with their name so that next time we do see them, it's theirs. We literally just did that with a couple of snacks for Kyle's brother. We put it aside and we're like, nope, this is for him, we're not touching it. And it really does work. And the next trick, this was like, when I discovered this trick, I was like, wow. So this might sound really silly, okay, but 
buy everything little. And what I mean by that is small containers. So things like this, I got these from Walmart. And mini food, like mini chocolate chips, M&M mini baking bits, mini marshmallows, pretzel sticks, anything little. Because when I measured out a serving on according to the back of the serving size, because we did portion control in the beginning, it made me look like I got way more food. It basically helped me trick my brain to think that I was getting way more. And that was really helpful because all I wanted to do was eat. So when I thought that I was getting a big portion, it helped me feel like I was satisfied. And these, again, the small containers make the food serving size look even bigger. And another Another trick I learned, I use like a small cheese grater when I'm grating cheese because it makes the cheese grater things really, really small and gives me the appearance that I'm eating way more than I'm actually eating and that really helped me. Thinking that I was getting a lot more little M&Ms, I was still getting the treats and you get quite a bit for a serving. If you get the sticks, not the twists, the rolled gold pretzel sticks, you get 90 of them for 190 calories, which is way more than other sizes of pretzels. So if you read the labels on the back, you'll see how many servings or how much you get. And that, that really helps too, knowing that you get a lot more of something, depending on the kind that you buy. So that was a really good trick and we still clearly we still do that and buy these things because they really help. Number three, put questions around the areas where you eat about being hungry. So for example, a trick I learned was when I used to overeat, when I was an emotional eater, I usually was eating for other reasons. So I started making these lists of questions and putting them in areas where I ate food and even putting them on the food themselves. And the first question always said, are you actually hungry? If I said yes, I would give myself a snack and I had a specific bin that I would pull from of snacks that were already portioned. But if the answer was no, I would ask, why do you wanna eat would be the second question. Did you have a bad day? Are you lonely? Are you bored? And then once I figured out what it was, I would go on to a list of things that I had attached to the questions that I could do instead of engaging in eating, like painting my nails, taking my dog for a walk, playing catch with Kyle, things that would distract me long enough so that I could eventually be ready to work through whatever it was that I was feeling of why I was originally gonna overeat. Here's an example, I taped it onto the back of the pretzels. So before you eat and then ask yourself, are you actually hungry? If it's yes, have a snack. If it's no, go to question two. And then exactly what I said to you. And then the third one would be, what can I do instead of eat? And then I would always have a little list of things that I could do instead. You know, and there's paint your nails, go for a walk, read a book or watch a movie. The list and the questions give you that time barrier of even five seconds to just stop and think about why. And when I put them literally everywhere. I put them on the cupboards, on the fridge, in the car, on my placemat where I ate, and even on the bags of food that I used to overeat themselves. Everywhere I went, there was a list of questions and it really did buy me time. And then usually when I seen that list and I went through everything, I would actually not eat when I wasn't hungry. The other trick that I learned was to put a picture of myself as a child in those areas as well. Because what happened was all day I would put myself down and talk negative to myself, but I would never do that to a child. So I thought if I put pictures of myself as a child, like these ones here, these are me when I was really little, if I put these in the areas where I was gonna emotionally eat and I was being pretty hard on myself and I seen these pictures, it would remind me, hey, if I imagine my little self as a child, I could never say those things to a little girl or a, a child. So it would stop me and go, wait, why then would I say it to myself now as an adult? I wouldn't say it to anyone, even a stranger, why would I say that to myself? And so those things really helped me stop and think about 
the things that I was doing when I was overeating, I was hurting my body. And when I was putting myself down negative, I was hurting myself. And they really helped me stop and think. And then it would buy me enough time to then go do something else instead that wasn't around food. Number four was I figured out where my tough spots during the day were of when I would go to emotional eat the most and I put a snack strategically in its place. So for me, my biggest problem was at night. After all my chores were done, I was done work and I went to go sit down and relax for the day. That was when I would start to reach for food even when I wasn't hungry. So I decided to place a snack there that was like a low calorie, high volume snack, meaning something I could eat big portions of that would keep me full and satisfied and then I would really not want to reach out for food because I was full. This popcorn was one of my favorites because you can eat a lot of popcorn and flavor it any way you want for pretty low calorie and be pretty satisfied. And Kyle and I used to make pizza popcorn. So we would basically sprinkle on a little bit of parm grated Parmesan cheese, some Italian seasoning, and some garlic powder. And it would taste like pizza popcorn and then we would be so satisfied that we wouldn't need to keep eating and keep reaching out for food after. And because we put it in that trickiest spot, which was at night, it sort of helped us for the rest of the night not want to reach out for food. We used to believe in that old myth that you can't eat past like 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. Yeah. It's just not true. It's no. the amount of food total you're eating in the day. Yeah. If, if you're eating in a calorie deficit, then... It doesn't matter when you eat the food or what you eat. And we just, seem to overeat at night, so this really helped us. That was why that was a really strategic trick, um, hack, whatever you want to call it, that helped us stop overeating. And the last one, okay, this might sound weird, but give myself what I want. And what I mean is, I always felt so guilty about food and I would always say no, 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 no to everything that I wanted. And all that would do is cause rebellion. So what I started to do, if I was craving something, I would actually say, okay, I'm gonna give myself this to the best of my ability. So if I was craving pizza, give myself either low calorie pizza, mini pizzas or pizza popcorn, whether it was a low calorie version or it was a portioned out exact what I was craving, that really helped stop me from rebelling because I was actually giving myself what I wanted. Anytime I said no, I would end up eating way more than what I bargained on. But when I said, hey, I'm craving a sandwich, I'm gonna give myself a sandwich, I would portion it out or make a low calorie version, it would satisfy me and it would stop that need to go against what I was saying all the time. No, 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 no. It stopped the denial and the guilt around food. And not only did we give ourselves low calorie versions there when we were craving things, but we did and still do give ourselves the real version on occasion too. So real pizza, real ice cream. And that really helps with the rebellion and the denial of food. Eating in a balanced diet too and eating things that I enjoyed really helped with that as well. And I want to put two bonus things in here as well. So one of them was every night Kyle and I would put a bottle of water and our running shoes and our workout clothes in the bathroom so that in the morning when we woke up we had no excuse but to put on our clothes to go walking and our running shoes and to get that first bottle of water down. And we didn't let ourselves leave the bathroom until we got our first bottle of water in for the day. And then at least then we were drinking a little bit of water. And drinking water helps fill your belly too so you're less likely to overeat. And staying hydrated your body needs that. If you're dehydrated, it can actually, your body can actually send you signals that you're hungry when actually what you need is water. So doing those tricks actually really helped. And then the other one is in the very beginning, out of sight, out of mind. So if we had food in the house that we knew we would overeat, we would put it in cupboards or in the freezer. Um, I've even heard of people who put it in the trunk of their car because it's out of sight, out of mind. So when you can't see it, you're less likely to focus on it because it's not actually there in front of you. Now we can have it in the house, but we've worked through it. So in the beginning, if you have to put it in a cupboard or you know put it in the freezer, if it helps, then that was something that really helped me. 
and it also helped Kyle. So the friends, these things really helped me hack my emotional eating, lose the weight and keep it off, and um, maybe it'll inspire some of you to be a little more gentler on yourself and allow yourselves things that you enjoy. Hopefully some of these things will help you guys. If you want to know exactly what I ate to lose the weight, I got weight loss guides. Links are down below. Also got a brand new guilt-free cookbook. And if you want the exact supplements that I use, we got Huddle. The link is down below. Harder than last time, protein powder and supplements. Or you can watch this video and this video to see how I love my food and lose weight and keep it off and just love life. I love you guys. I hope you have a beautiful day. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope this helps some of you really truly because I know what it's like to struggle. I love you guys. Whew. You're not alone. Sass and I are right here for you. Do the robot out. <laughs> I am a robot. I don't have any more words. See ya. <laughs> I can still see you. <laughs> Bye, Bye. Guys. Love you. Remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale. It's also about here and here. Heart and mindset. Fight through it. You can do it. Don't give up.